We had a thousand people a year dying. And nothing was done. When Charlie Baker got into office, he had, um, uh, he got people together, health professionals, educators, and law enforcement. They drew up the bill. The Senate passed the bill when they saw Governor Baker doing his. The House passed the bill, you know, when, they, when Baker put his through. <clears throat> and then all the legislators got their picture taken in front of a podium as if they had actually done something. And that's when I said to Governor Baker, I will run for this seat because we have to we have to solve problems and that's what Governor Baker is particularly good at you know the the MBTA he's trying to solve problems there he's trying to do it with DCF he's trying to do it in so many ways in the state and try to get spending under control which as everyone knows is way out of control we had the legislature pass a bill trying to raise our taxes by four percent and I meet a lot of people who say they're not against paying taxes. They just want to know where is the money going, which there is no transparency now, so you don't know. And secondly, why do you need four more percent of our money? What are you going to do with it? How is it going to be effective? Who is it going to help? So, so, so obviously physical concerns are bigger in your priority as well. Yep. Um, the MBTA, is that a problem? Should that be a profit center? I don't think public transportation in America can ever be a profit center. I don't think anyone thinks it can. Look at Amtrak, look at every public uh, transportation system in America. I don't think there are any that are profitable. Uh, we keep pointing to Europe. There are none that are profitable in Europe either. They have to be heavily subsidized. So as long as taxpayers are going to be on the line for it, you know, we need to make sure that it's running properly and that we are making all the cost efficiencies that we can make because you can't keep raising the rates for the people who use public transportation because in most cases they're the least able to pay those bills and that's not the purpose of public transportation so it's incumbent upon any administration to really try to control costs in the public transportation sector because that's responsible that means what you're trying to do is protect lower rates and make sure that people can use the system and secondly, to make sure it's running properly so that the system is usable, you know, by people, which this one, as we all know, it simply hasn't been. What are the big concerns on the South Shore presently are water concerns. And, you know, we're heading into an era with scant resources, especially when it comes to water. Um, the legislation that was passed years and years and years ago that brought Brockton into the mix in terms of Silver Lake, etc. Um, what's your response to kind of enforcement, um, better management of water resources on the South Shore as it opposed as Brockton comes into the mix? Of things well, I, I, when I was a selectman in Pembroke, that's one of the things we looked at was the agreement that we had in Brockton, and could we do better? You know, were we giving too much of our water resources up to Brockton? And we found that Brockton has so much, that contract is written in such a way that it's nearly impossible for us to do anything in Pembroke to do it. But I will say this, our DPW over the years, one of the things that Pembroke DPW and Water Department did over the years is they bought an enormous number of wells in Pembroke. So I think of all the towns in the area, Pembroke is the best off in terms of having availability of water. So that's a good thing, but we were sort of forced into that because we had to protect ourselves because Brockton was taking so much from us. But some good thinking on, you know, on the part of some people in Pembroke, uh, you know, kept the water, you know, supply very good. And we still have wells that we haven't done anything with that we could tap if necessary. So legislatively, what, what rectifications, what corrections can you possibly foresee happening to, to that ancient, now ancient agreement? Well, I, I think that Brockton is actually moving ahead to try to do some things. The problem is they haven't done well in long-term planning. They were looking at desalinization and things like that, which as you know are extremely expensive. Um, you know, the initially they were saying that the wells in Brockton, which were poisoned because of the shoe factories and that, that they would be usable in 90 years. So my guess is we're about 40 years away from that. 
but we have to have a solution between now and then. I think the best thing we can do at this point is to try to look at Brockton and what resources they can tap and what steps they're taking and help them if possible. And, and it could be that there are solutions you know, that are coming down that will help solve that problem. But Brockton has to be in the lead on that. It can't be these towns. Why can't it be the towns? Because the towns have the water. Because they don't have to listen to us. I mean, they should be looking at trying to find ways of getting water that doesn't take the water from our communities. Right. Is, they because in the, I know, well, they are trying some things. They haven't worked so far. Right. But it isn't that they've been sitting back not doing anything. It's just that they have such massive water needs that I'm, I'm not sure that just getting one source of water is going to help them. But whether we had a regional authority or a regional group to help get everyone together to try to help solve that problem, that might be the best thing we can do if we can get them to cooperate. But in my recollection from when I was a selectman, that was part of the problem. Now, maybe now, maybe they're more willing to listen. Maybe this is one of the things that you try to get the governor to look at or people on his staff as well. All right, because they, they definitely have the Legislatively, they have the numbers behind them. Oh, that, absolutely. So, uh, you know, a constituency such as Pembroke does not have. Right. Where would the MR, MRWRA, MWRA possibly have a role in terms of maybe hooking into Brockton? Well, that, that's why I say Governor Baker, you know, would be a, maybe a resource to, to look into that. And to, we, we also talked with them years ago as well when I was a selectman. And again, it was... I never got the impression that Brockton didn't want to solve the problem. It's just that the solutions that they had were too costly, and long term they they weren't the you know the right answer. Right. So Viable. makes it extremely difficult. And because Brockton is such a poor city at this point, they don't have as as much of the resources as they need. That's why the legislature at some point is going to have to step up with some monetary resources and probably some research, but. It behooves all the towns on the South Shore who are affected by this to try to get together with Brockton and try to come up with a long-term solution as well. It isn't going to go away. No. Not it's... for another 40 years. Another generation. So, uh, in closing, what message do you have to Pembroke voters? Well, I, I think with Pembroke voters, um, they know me I, from being a selectman. They know who I am. They know I don't run away from issues. They know I stand up. And, and take things head on and try to come up with solutions. When I was a selectman, you know, we we formed the committee, you know, to get out of Silver Lake. We went to five selectmen, we started a capital plan, we were an active board of selectmen, we got things done. So I think people remember that and they also remember that I don't play politics. When I say I'm going to do something, I try. If I can't do it, I'll take responsibility and say I can't do it. I'm not, I don't play politics, I don't try to please everybody, I try to do my job. And my job is to get things done for the voters of Pembroke, and people who remember me, they know that that's what I did. Great. Thank you for the time, and Pembroke voters, thank you. Nice meeting you. Thank you.